Welcome, I'm Patrick Connors, and welcome to my video workshop on linear perspective. I've been formally teaching this subject for over 15 years, and my drawings, paintings, and sculpture have greatly benefited from the knowledge and experience derived from linear perspective. Perspective has a long and noble tradition and is essential to the development and accomplishments in painting, drawing, and sculpture for over 500 years. So whether you draw or paint still life, figures, portraitures, interiors, or landscapes, this workshop will be of interest and of use to you. One of the best ways to understand the theory of linear perspective is to make a drawing employing an Albertian veil. As the name implies, an Albertian veil was first advocated by Alberti, one of the inventors of linear perspective. As you can see in this engraving by Durer, the Albertian veil is placed between the artist and the model. The Albertian veil is made up of any number of squares. You can make a small one, as I did here for landscape painting. They can be any size, any proportion, you can put diagonals in, anything that will help you. But for our purposes today, we have an 8 by 8 Albertian veil from which I'm going to make a drawing of this model. Now that I've introduced you to the picture plane, we can now discuss one point, two point, and three point perspective. Let's start with one point. You saw that in the Albertian veil drawing that an example of something in one point perspective was the base that the house sat upon. Let's talk about that further. When something is in one point perspective, we in perspective define its relationship to the picture plane. In other words, here's our picture plane, here's our object. If the face of the object is parallel, in other words, it is not turned at any way like this. If it is parallel to the picture plane, it doesn't matter the distance. As long as the angular relationship is parallel, that is one point perspective. And as you saw in the base for the house, anything that's in one point perspective will vanish to that central vanishing point, which we'll call the point of sight. But let me further define this, because this definition requires one bit of specificity, and that is this. One point perspective is best understood not when we're looking directly at it as you are, but when we're looking from above. This is how it's best determined if something is in one point perspective. It doesn't matter the distance. That is important, but not now. What matters is its angular relationship. In other words, it's not doing this. The face of the cube is not doing this. It is like this. That is one point. And there is one critical principle that must be understood, and that is this. The vanishing point for all objects in one point perspective is the point of sight. There are some exceptions, but for boxes, it's always the point of sight. We'll call, I'll label it that. It is sometimes called the principal vanishing point, the central vanishing point, and so forth and so on. But this will be called the point of sight in our workshop. And you'll see how it works in just a moment. All right, let's take our information now. We're going to draw our cube, and we're going to start with the front view. In one point perspective, you always start with the front cube, well, uh, front view, pardon me. Well, that's fairly simple. It's only, you know, a square. So I'm going to place a square right here. You could place it wherever you want, but I'm going to just place it right here. And let's see here. I'm just going to, I'm going to make it this big so I can fit it in. All right. I use my triangle, place my stylus, move it up, there we go, place my stylus, there we go, and then I want to go up two and a, 
Je regarde. All right, so here's the front view. A little smaller, you can make it any size, it doesn't matter at this, uh, uh, at this point. What does matter is that you understand if it's in one point perspective, and that's what we understand from the plan, the four corners must vanish to the point of sight. So I think I'll use my ruler for the, or no, I'll just use this. And I'm going to use red. As I mentioned before, I like to color code these, and I use red for the vanishing. There we go. I placed a push pin here. You can see how easy it makes it then, and it, it's always going back to the same point because of that push pin. Look at that. There we go. Thank you.